African leaders in their original jobs before becoming president. Africa has some of the world's longest serving heads of state. These leaders are remarkable in their accomplishments both at home and internationally. Everybody has to start somewhere. That includes all the celebrities, billionaires, executives and CEOs of the world, even African presidents. So where did they begin their careers? Watch on to find out what these presidents did before landing in office. Stay tuned. 1. Liberian President George Weah George Opong Weah, born October 1, 1966, is a Liberian football or soccer player and politician. George Mane Weah could dribble, sprint and shoot. He also possessed a good leap to power headers past goalkeepers. But he scored his best ever goal by winning the Liberian presidential elections in 2018. Weah is not your ordinary African footballer who just wanted to play football to escape the harsh reality of poverty and his childhood. He dreams that he could help his country and he initially did through his prowess on the football pitch. But then again, he got handed the keys to the presidential mansion where he can make all those differences he had always dreamed about. It is essential to remember that in the first round of voting in 2005, we had defeated outgoing Liberian president Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. He fell short of garnering the necessary 51% of the votes in the first round, exactly like in 2017. In the second round of the 2015 election, Johnson Sirleaf received 59% of the vote versus Weir's 41%. But 14 years after retiring from playing football, the 51-year-old got a chance to score political goals. The first African country to declare its independence in 1847 is now the first country in Africa to demonstrate that in the proper hands, football can translate into power. He's still the one and only player ever to hold the African, European and World Diadem for the best footballer at the same time. 2. South African President Matamela Cyril Ramaphosa. He was born on 17 November 1952 in Johannesburg. Once a leading trade unionist, he became the symbol of black capitalism in South Africa after the ANC came to power at the end of the white minority rule in 1994. Ramaphosa started his political career at the South African Student Organization. A student group formed as part of the broader black consciousness movement, which sought to unite black, colored, and Indian peoples of South Africa against the apartheid regime. In the painful and bloody aftermath of the 1976 Soweto uprising, Ramaphosa was detained for six months for his participation. In the early 80s, he went on to join the trade union movement and served as first secretary of the National Union of Mine Workers and steadily rose through the ranks of the country's then largest trade union federation, the Congress of South African Trade Unions. But business was never his passion. His first love was politics and he harbored ambitions to become the deputy of Nelson Mandela, South Africa's first black president. When Mr. Mandela overlooked him, he was said to have been so upset that he refused to attend Mr. Mandela's inauguration as president. He also declined to take a post in government, but he later found his way back and is currently South Africa's president. President Cyril Ramaphosa was sworn in as President of the Republic of South Africa on Thursday, the 15th of February 2018, following the resignation of President Jacob Zuma. 3. Ethiopian President Saleh Wek Zewde She was born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, but completed her education in France. Thereafter, she started working for the Ethiopian Foreign Service. From 1989 to 1993, Saliwek served as ambassador to Senegal with accreditation to Mali, Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, Gambia, and Guinea. She later served as ambassador to France as permanent representative of UNESCO and was accredited to Tunisia and Morocco from 2002 to 2006. Until 2011, Saliwek served as special representative of United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and head of the United Nations Integrated Peace Building Office in the Central African Republic. In 2011, Ban Ki-moon appointed Sunny Work as Director General of the United Nations Office at Nairobi. In June 2018, 
Secretary General Antonio Guterres appointed Saliwek as a special representative to the African Union and head of the United Nations Office to the African Union at the level of Under Secretary General of the United Nations. She was the first woman to hold the post. Saliwek was appointed as President of Ethiopia on 25th October 2018, the first woman to serve the role. She replaced Mulatu Teshome, who resigned in unclear circumstances, and Saliwek served two six-year terms. She is definitely a powerful game-changer. Would love to have some of what you're having, Sally. 4. Benin President Patrice Talon Talon is of foreign origin and was born in Ouida. He descends from slave traders. His father was from Ouida, while his mother came from Gredegbe family in Abomey. He obtained a baccalaureate in Dakar, Senegal. With dreams of becoming a pilot, Talon failed at a medical test and this dream became impossible. In 1983, Talon became involved in trading and packaging of agricultural inputs. He also later established cotton factories in Benin and was known as the King of Cotton for his involvement in the cotton industry. He built his empire due to connections with the Beninese political class. Talon was one of President Thomas Boni Yayi's chief financial backers, financing his campaigns in 2006 and 2011 elections. In 2011, Talon became the management of Cotonou's imports at the port of Cotonou. In 2012, he fled to France after he was accused of embezzling more than 18 million euros in taxes. He fell out with Boni Yayi and was later accused of an involvement in the plot to kill him. He was pardoned in 2014. Talon ran as an independent candidate in March 2016 presidential elections and won, and he was sworn in on April 6, 2016. 5. Central African Republic President Faustin Arkanj Faustin Arkanj Tuadere was born in Bangui, the son of a driver and a farmer. His family was originally from Damara to the north of Bangui. He earned a mathematics doctorate in 1986 in France and another doctorate also in mathematics in Yaoundé, Cameroon in 2004. In 1987, he became assistant lecturer of mathematics at the University of Bangui and was vice dean of the university's faculty of science from 1989 to 1992. In the latter year, he became director of the teachers training college. He became Vice-Chancellor of the University of Bangui in May 2004. Tuadera subsequently served as a Rector of the University from 2005 to 2008. So, how did this farmer's son go from lecturer to being the President of Central African Republic? On January 22, 2008, Tuadera was appointed Prime Minister of the Central African Republic by the President, Francois Bozizé, due to his amazing works in service on the EU-CLID. He served in that position until January 2013, but was dismissed as a result of the peace agreement made by Bozizé with the Seleka rebels, which required that the new prime minister be appointed from the opposition. In 2015, Tuadera announced that he would be running for president as an independent candidate without party affiliation in the upcoming election which he won. On March 30th, 2016, he was sworn in as President of the Central African Republic. He was also a deacon in the Baptist Church of the Fraternal Union of Baptist Churches and is still a member of this union. 6. Madagascar's President, Andri Nirina Rajolina Born on May 30th, 1984, in Antirabe, Madagascar, his father, Roger Yves Rajolina, was an army colonel. No information is available on his mother. After his high school graduation, he decided not to pursue higher education but instead to become an entrepreneur. At the age of 19 in 1993, he became an event organizer and promoter. With his success, in 1999 he launched Injet, a digital printing company. In 2007, Rajolina purchased a television and radio station and became a well-known disc jockey. With his background in entertainment, media and advertising, he decided to enter politics. 
He was elected mayor of Antananarivo on December 12, 2007. Rajolina and then president of Madagascar, President Mark Ravolomanana, quickly became political competitors. In 2009, street demonstrations broke out against the president. Rajolina supported the demonstrators and accused the central government of misappropriation of funds. He described the government as a dictatorship and used his control of many media outlets to broadcast his views. A group of the military organized a coup and Rajolina was made president of the High Transitional Authority of Madagascar. He held this role from March 21, 2009 until January 25, 2014. He is still currently the president of Madagascar. 7. Côte d'Ivoire President Alassane Ouattara Ouattara was born to a Muslim family of the Diola people. There were claims that at least one of his now parents hailed from neighboring Upper Volta, now Burkina Faso. This would prove to be a contentious issue during his political career. Watara earned a BSc in Business in 1965, an MA in 1967, and a PhD in 1972 in Economics in the US. He was employed as an economist at the IMF in 1968. He left the IMF in 1973 to begin working at the Central Bank of West African States, where he held various positions, including that of Vice Governor, before returning to the IMF in 1984 to serve as Director of the African Department. He left the IMF in 1988 to become Governor of the Central Bank of West African States, a position he held until December 1993 when he was made honorary governor. He became the Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire on 7 November 1990, still under the IMF position. In 2010, Ouattara was sworn in as president and formed a parallel government based in an Abidjan hotel under the protection of UN peacekeeping forces after President Gbagbo had forced election results and declared himself winner. Bagbo was arrested on April 11, 2011 and removed from power and then with no competition, Ouattara could fulfill his dream for Côte d'Ivoire. 8. Malawian President Lazarus Chakwera He was sworn into office on June 28, 2020 at Malawi Square at Bingo International Convention Center, Lilongwe. Before joining frontline politics, Chakwera was president of the Malawi Assemblies of God from 1989 until he resigned on May 14, 2013. Yup, you got that right. He was a pastor. He went on to contest in the 2014 general elections as a presidential candidate for the Malawi Congress Party. That presidential election was marred by irregularities forcing the Electoral Commission to petition the High Court for permission to conduct a manual audit of the ballot. Though Chakwera was supportive of the audit, his rival, Arthur Peter Mutharika of Democratic Progressive Party, took an injunction to stop it, forcing the Commission to announce the results and was declared winner. In the meantime, Chakwera won a parliamentary seat and became the leader of opposition in the National Assembly. Chakwara later defeated President Peter Mutharika in the 2020 election, having obtained almost 59% of the votes. 9. Mozambique President Philip Nusi Nusi was born in Namau, in Mueda District, Cabo Delgado Province, belonging to the Makonde ethnic group. Both his parents were veterans of the Liberian movement Frelimo. In 1973, at the age of 14, he joined Frelimo and received political and military training at Nachinguia in Tanzania. In 1990, he completed his mechanical engineering degree at Antonin Zapotoki Military Academy in Brno, Czechoslovakia, now the Czech Republic's University of Defense. Proud to his appointment to the cabinet by President Armando Guibuza, Nusi worked for the state-owned Mozambique Ports and Railways Authority, CFM. He became the executive director of CFM North in 1995. He joined the company's board of directors in 2007. From 1993 to 2002, Nusi served as the president of Club Ferroviario de Nampula, a top-division football club based in Nampula. 
He is also a lecturer at the Nampula campus of the Universidad Pedagogica. He receives further training in management in India, South Africa, Eswatini and the United States. Newsom was inaugurated for his first term as the fourth president of Mozambique on 15 January 2015 and for his second term on 15 January 2020. 10. Seychelles President Wevel Ramkalawan Wevel Ramkalawan was born on Mahi, the principal island of Seychelles. His father was a metal worker and his mother a primary school teacher. He is an ordained minister in the Anglican Church. It was his work mission as a priest that led Ramkalawan to politics. Through his pastoral work, he came into contact with many people who had been the subject of repression and abuses of human and civil liberties by government. At that time, the church was the only institution that could speak out on these issues. In 1990, Ramkalawan preached a landmark sermon broadcast to the nation on the national radio station in which he questioned the practices of the one-party government and gave voice to the desire of people for greater freedom, respect for human rights and observance of the rule of law in the country. The sermon was an inspiration for the movement for political liberty and democracy in Seychelles. As a consequence of doing that, he was banned by the one-party state government from being heard and appearing on national TV. This move drew Ramkalawan closer into politics. In 1991, still a priest, he joined others who had been active in opposing the government and formed Parti Sesalwa, initially an underground organization, and became its leader. On 26th October 2020, Wevo Ramkalawan was sworn in as the President of the Republic of Seychelles after fighting his way to the top. This is definitely encouraging for anyone who suffered through a word start to their career and we hope this motivates you to work hard to achieve your dreams. Which African leader is your role model? Leave your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe.